So today's lab is going to be a real quick introduction on how to um, run linear regression in R. Um, we're going to look at some of the claims that we made in, in the lecture today and see how they pan out. So let's name this lab 2 linear regression. And this is going to be associated with um, lecture 2. Uh, so let's just write that there. Um, and we want to make this markdown and we can render it. So there's our nice title. Um, and we can add some code. The first thing um, that we want to do is, um, is we want to install a package, a, a package called mass, which is going to have some data we want. So probably the easiest way to do this um, is we can start a new console and we can actually start it with um, using the same sharing, the kind of same input as lab two. Um, so let's do that. And then we can go over here and uh, say install that packages and then we'll pass it the name of the package we want to install. Um, so that's the mass package. So we, we do it like this and um, if I, uh, if I send that off, it's going to say that it's installing the package and it downloaded and installed it. And so for my code now, I'm just going to note here with a little comment that we installed that package. Um, we can lo load the package using the library command. So if I say library mass, um, this should now load that package. It has no output, so there's nothing to show. Um, and it comes with some data, and particularly the data we want to work with is a data set called Boston. So if I say data um, Boston, this should, should load up my Boston data set. Again, no output, but we can, um, we can look at, kind of look at the beginning of this data. Um, it's a data set, so let's say dim uh, Boston. And we see that it's 506 rows by 14 columns. And indeed, we could look at um, the first couple uh, rows and columns of it. And uh, so here is what the data looks like. Maybe we can look at all of the columns um, and uh, the first five rows or so. And this will allow us to see if we had the output here. We're going to look at 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 what's going on here. Um, if you look up, maybe we can try this in our console. Let's see if this works. If I do question mark Boston, this is going to bring up the help page um, for the Boston data set. And the Boston data set is about housing values in the suburbs of Boston, 506 rows, 14 columns, um, and has a whole bunch of covariates. So crim is per capita crime rate by town, zone is portion of residential, and you can read about all these covariates. So these are the columns we see here, like NOx, RM, age, dis, rad, right? So these are all of these covariates. We have some, at least some idea of what's going on here. And one thing that we'd like to do, so we might even be able to, let's just test this out. If I do question mark Boston here, yeah, so I'll print this out. So I'll leave that there. And what we want to do is let's, um, Let's fit a regression to predict uh, the median house value from the crime rate. Presumably, um, if uh, the crime rate is high, the house value will be lower, right? So we're going to expect some, some negative relationship. And we can explore that negative relationship um, by just plotting it. So plotting is always a good thing to look at. Um, first, when we're, when we're messing with data. So if I want to, so what do we say? We want median house price from crime rate. So if I look at my variables here, um, crim is crime rate by town, and um, med V is the median value of the occupied home in thousands of dollars. Um, and so if I want to plot this, I can say Boston and uh, dollar sign should give this to me. So if I say Boston dollar sign um, med V, so the median home value, that will give me those values. Or if I say Boston dollar sign crim, that will select out the crime rate. Um, so I want to plot, let's say, the excess is the crime rate. That's my independent variable. And on the y-axis, I want to plot the median value. So I can plot those. Um, and that's what it looks like. 
Um, so it looks like that it's kind of censored near zero. It is a really low crime rate. Um, but there is some negative relationship. Surely those um, with very, very high crime rate have a very low home value. So there's some relationship. It's maybe not really um, the most linear. Um, what could we do? We could look at maybe a log that make things a little better. Maybe we can plot them both on a log scale. Um, ooh, that looks better. Not perfectly linear, but it's um, at least they're not weirdly censored. And again, we see our negative trend here, which is that um, as uh, the median value uh, or as the crime rate increases, the median value of the home falls. So if we want to fit a regression model to this, um, what we can do is we can call the LM function. So, um, so if I want my model, I'm going to call it mod for my regression model. And um, mod, um, we want to... Um, Let's see, what do we want to do? We want to be plotting um, the, sorry, the median, the, we want to be making a model of the uh, median home value. So we're in the median, med v, that's the name of the, of the variable, and we want to have that against, um, we want to um, be regressing that against crime rate. So we can say crim, and I need to tell my model where these two variables, medv and crim, are coming from, um, and that's the Boston data set. So, so, um, so in notation, this basically says, um, in fact, I can, uh, let's add this. So if I say that, um, if I say medv, um, by, maybe you can read this, by crim basically says um, something like med v equals beta 0 plus beta 1 times crim, right? So that's, that's basically um, what this tilde means here. <clears throat> okay, so if I run my model, I'm not actually going to get any output. Um, I could print out my model by calling mod. It's going to tell me, tell me what I call it, but it's also going to tell me my estimated coefficient. So this is beta 0 and beta 1, um, as we wanted. Um, you can also get other summaries of your model. If I call summary on mod, um, this will give me not only my estimates, my standard errors, t values, and p values. Um, it'll give me f statistics, r squared, all this other good stuff. We'll talk about some of this as the course goes on. But for now, we're mostly just interested in the prediction problem. And um, so we're mostly interested in, in, in beta 9, beta 1. Um, and for now, we're going to, um, next lecture, we can talk about variable transformation. It looks like it's better to do this log transformation. This is a model without log transformation. But we'll, we'll talk about that a little more next time. Um, and uh, so if I want to get the coefficients out of this, I can say um, mod, can I get coefficients, coef, gives me my intercept and uh, as 24 and my slope, which is, um, which is negative, which is kind of what, what we expect here. Um, So if I plot, um, I can I can plot. Let's see. Uh, my original plot was Boston, Crim on the x-axis and Med V on the y, and I can add this um, by calling this function a b line, and I can pass it the coefficients for my model, and it will plot a line here. So that's the line here. It's plotting. Not really a great, great fit. Probably we should work on a log scale. And we can talk about that a little more next time.
but that allows us to plot it. And I, we made a claim in the lecture today about how to get the coefficients. Um, and so we claim that if we had accessory design matrix, a little y as our, um, as our um, values we want to predict, um, that this would give us that there's a certain formula we could follow, right? So first, let's form both these. Let's say x, um, we want to form it from the median home value. So we'll make that um, a 506 by 1. Um, so if that was x, we wanted to make our design matrix. Now this is just a matrix con containing our values, right? But our design matrix should have the intercept. So we should be able to add um, if I call C bind and I <clears throat> this stands for column bind, I can column bind on the column of all ones onto my X's. And if I do that and then print out X again, now I'm gonna get what we were calling design matrix as ones down the main dia or ones down the first uh, row, or first column and my home values in the second one. And we wanted, what did we want? We wanted y to be my um, home values, is that right? Uh, so this should be the crime rate, right? And, uh, oops, let's print our x again, right? Yeah, that's the crime rate, is our x. y is our, is our home values. And um, what does that leave us with? So our formula, um, our formula was that we looked at um, was that y hat or that beta hat. Let's actually keep this as code. Beta hat was x transpose x inverse x transpose y. So what we want is transpose of x times x. So that's matrix mode. So that's x transpose x. We can invert it with g inverse, which is generalized inverse. So that's x transpose x inverse. We multiply by x transpose. And we multiply by y. Non-conformable arguments, of course. Let's think about this. Let's just do some checks. What's the dimension of y? Ah. Um, this needs to be not a vector, but a 506 by 1 matrix. Now, this should work if we're lucky. 506, dimension of x, that. So let's just see, what's the dimension of this? Nope, that's not what I want to do. Undo. Five hundred one. Whoops, did we input the wrong value here? This should be five hundred six, right? You mentioned that my Boston data set was five hundred six, right? Yeah, so that should be five hundred six. Scroll back up here. Five hundred six by one. Okay, there we go. Things might work now. Why is this? This is beta hat. There we go, and. Um, So beta at, as claimed, is this is 24 is the first component and negative 4 is the second. And that is exactly um, what we got from our, our call to LM. So LM here is the how we fit our model. It stands for linear model, i.e. a linear regression. And we did that. We got our, our coefficients as 24 and negative 0.4. And indeed, what you see is that, as claimed in lecture, <clears throat> beta hat can also be found as g inverse of x transpose of the converse, x transpose of y. And basically, behind the scenes, that's what's going on um, uh, for um, uh, in the LM function there. 
So we can also, um, if we want to get our y hats, we can call predict um, on our model, or we could alternatively, we have our formula, which is that we take x and we multiply by beta hat. Our claim is that that is y hat. Um, so maybe I should go back and say this is y hat. First one is y hat um, from our model. And we're called lm. And uh, we can look at the first couple of these by calling the function head, um, which gives us the first couple of these. Yep. And um, Or we can get it as x times beta hat. And if we look at um, this, it should be the same thing, right? So, um, for example, we could plot um, our y's, which is the median value against the y hats. Um, and it does an okay job, right? Ideally, the, these would um, perfectly lie on that on on the line there. Um, on kind of a 45 degree line, yeah, it does okay. Probably needs a log transformation, um, which we'll talk about next time. But that's kind of the basics of running uh, running a regression. Um, and uh, we can leave it there for now. Um, and we'll talk about some, some more advanced regression topics next time and look at the code too.